right. And then um, Vera and I will start talking about the Colorado Mycological Society. And you can let me know, Mika or Vera, if you see this. Do you see the presentation, Vera? All right, so thank you. Um, yeah, so this is the first year trying to do a lot of this stuff online. We are very excited to be offering this opportunity for people to check us out and see what we're all about. But, and wanted to sort of share what the, the history of the Colorado Mycological Society and how we have a long legacy of mycology in the region. And so the history and the legacy of Colorado mycology it largely has to do with this gentleman right here, Dr. Sam Mitchell. And we're going to give a little bit of background into Sam Mitchell. Um, Vera knew him personally and can sort of talk about his origins. Um, what do we know about Sam, Vera? Dr. Uh, Dwayne H. Mitchell, uh, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why they call him Sam. Um, was born uh, to pioneering family in near Winchester, Kansas. 640 acres, they came on a, his parents came in a covered wagon. And uh, he worked like a dog, actually, on that little farm. Went to uh, a country school. There in that country school, he was in a play. And the play had something to do with Uncle Sam. And he played, for, he portrayed Uncle Sam he did such a good job, so they called him Sam from there on, or Sammy, and uh, it stuck. He's thought, well, we, we didn't name the herbarium for Dwayne D.H. Mitchell. We named it for Sam Mitchell. That was his personal name, and everybody knew him that way. So I have a, uh, just a brief little story about how he ended up uh, studying mushrooms when when you think about his uh, origins. He was a, um, as I said, a, a son of pioneers out in the prairies of Kansas. Worked, 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 went to a grade school there on the horse, rode horses to school, and graduated from the high school in the community, Winchester High School. And everybody, people who knew him well at that time knew how brilliant he was. And he ended up uh, graduating from high school and then going to um, college. And uh, the, uh, the college was called Geneva College in Pennsylvania. And there he obviously demonstrated his brilliance, science, anything that he was uh, assigned to do, I'm sure he could do, got a scholarship to Harvard, had a choice uh, between physics and medicine, and chose medicine, but he was always very interested and good at physics too. But his, um, his medical training was happening about the time of during the war. As you can see, um, he, uh, he uh, let's see, he, joined, after he got his uh, MD, he joined the enlisted in the army so that he could go and fight or help, not fight, but use his medical training to help with the um, uh, injured soldiers over in the South Pacific. He was a part of a MASH unit, which I realize MASH stands for medical, I don't know, I, I wrote it down once anyway. Uh, it stands for um, Matt is not. You know what MASH is. It's a um, Mobile uh, Army, Army Surgical Hospital. Pardon me? Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. That's it. Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. He said he learned more in a month there. Uh, oh gosh, amputating legs and helping people survive uh, that, than he did all the time at Harvard. So he, uh, when he, when the war ended, he uh, was a major as a, and that's a picture of him as a young man uh, in the army. Uh, and he, uh, he uh, had enlisted 
So when it was over, he um, came back and uh, did some uh, uh, Massachusetts general, some special internship, so he could finish his, his um, entire credentials. And then he moved to Denver. Lucky us, he moved to Denver in 1944, I think it was, or 45. I've got it written down here someplace, but uh, matters not. One of the first things he did was he lived at um, the Brown Palace, that wonderful historical hotel in Denver, as the house doctor. And there he did a lot of, um, of um, medical help to the uh, wealthy people around there because of course they didn't probably have emergency rooms like we have now. And then he became a uh, medical doctor in the community, uh, gaining reputation as being a doctor's doctor. He could diagnose anything and the doctors would come to him. So his diagnostic skills were great. And uh, when he finished, uh, uh, then during that time of, of uh, being a, uh, an active doctor in Denver, he married and had two sons. And those, the family bought, I think maybe it was 90 acres, but we're looking at it right there in that picture, near Edwards, Colorado, um, in uh, Eagle County. And uh, New York Mountain is near there if it's not that background. And uh, he went there for fun, for the family to relax and get away from some of that stress. And um, he was able to uh, uh, enjoy himself a lot. Uh, his children found some mushrooms. They didn't know what they were. They said, what are these? They were big and they were out in the, in the forest, I think. And he says, I don't know what they are, but I bet I can figure it out. And he tried and tried and tried to figure it out and couldn't. So he uh, thought, well, that won't be too complicated. I'll go to a university. I'll have somebody who knows about mushrooms. I'll go to the state forestry department. They'll have somebody. He tried all over and had no success. So he was then uh, uh, working kind of on his own. Uh, got over to, went, checked uh, with somebody at the Museum of Natural History is what it was called, science it's our museum in Denver, anyway. And a woman there who was volunteering as a, um, and she was interested in mushrooms. The two of them worked uh, a bit there, and he met a man. A physic he knew this physician named Dr. Brumquist, who was a botanist, but very interested uh, in plants. Not, but that they together all uh, decided that. Somebody ought to study the mushrooms. So that's the beginning of this man coming to Denver and uh, with this big passion. You have any other? Did you? I miss anything? Or any questions, Andy? No. So when so he moved in this ranch here that we see is yeah. where he first moved in with his kids and he saw mushrooms and stuff. Uh -huh. And so historically, there wasn't anybody that he could talk to in Colorado and learn to learn about mushrooms. So he essentially what he needed to do was search out somebody and then he went out broadly. So we, I wanted to point out that this little puzzle shaped square thing that you see on the slide, um, that is a QR code. And several years ago, Vera, uh, myself and Dr. Scott Bates uh, worked together and wrote an article in Fungi Magazine. And if you were to take out your cell phone and turn the camera on and pointed it at your screen at that QR code, uh, what it would do is if you have an iPhone or um, an Android phone, that camera automatically recognizes that symbol and asks you or prompts you as to whether or not you want to open that website. And when you open that website, it will open up a PDF file, which is a copy of the article that we wrote. So if you want to learn more about the history of Dr. Sam Mitchell specifically, um, you can definitely read more about it in the Fungi Magazine article. Um, so Vera, uh, when Sam started looking for people, he had to start going outside of Colorado. 
and who was the there was at least one person that he ran into right correct yes that was a wonderful one to run into and he heard about through this uh, friend and associate uh, mary wells um and others about the so-called bug camp um, at the sponsored uh, at the university of michigan and I'm not sure why they called it the bug camp, but they may have been doing other things besides fungi, but it was a study uh, place every summer, I think, uh, to learn and listen to lectures and to study uh, fungi. And so uh, Mary Wells went there once and then Sam went and took classes under Alexander Smith. I call him Alexander the Great. Alexander mm -hmm. H. Smith was a professor at the uh, University of Michigan, head of the mycology department, and there's a picture of him. He it's was a remarkable man, and I, well, I was able to collect with him uh, and learn from him for years. You know, notice those socks, the shoes, uh, he, he wore those button, I mean, uh, laced up boots because where he collected a lot, they had leeches and, and ticks and stuff. Here, not so much, but uh, then he wore the socks and he always carried some kind of a stick, cane to uh, help him around. And I was able to collect with him by being introduced uh, from Sam. Now Sam learned about Alex. Alex's goal was to study the Western fungi. So of course he came out and was involved, uh, stayed in a, a hotel mm, kind of motel in yeah. small mass and sometimes in Aspen, was involved in the Aspen Conference, uh, which eventually turned into Telluride. There's a long story about that with Manny Salzman involved too. But uh, Alex Smith was the source, I think, for so much inspiration for Sam to yeah. learn the Western fungi. It and they started to be well, started very slowly. Uh, he pretty much taught Sam everything he knows, right? He taught Sam everything he knows. And uh, Sam was very, right. of course, he learned it all. That's him. Yeah. Uh, that's a picture of Sam in the Botanic Garden. He ended up uh, because he knew some of the people. Uh, he had some of them were actually his patients uh, who were big in the Denver Botanic Gardens uh, uh, board. And they invited him to come and uh, set up his lab in the new Betcher building that was being built. And uh, there he is in that uh, room down there with his microscopes and all his books. He bought everything himself. Yeah, um, and that, mm -hmm. that collaboration with um, Alex ended up being very lucrative, I think, for both of them, because over time, um, Sam got very influenced and contributing his own scientific knowledge about mushrooms in Colorado to the community at large, um, especially with a number of publications. So there, here's one with Sam Mitchell and Alexander Smith talking about mushrooms from the Alpine Zone, which is going to be very important and relevant to today's expo since our keynote speaker, Dr. Kathy Cripps, will be talking about this very subject of mushrooms from the Aspen Zone. But being a medical doctor, you he became probably one of the most influential resources on mushroom toxicology, another important issue, given the fact that we have Michael Bug later on today. But why don't you say something about his, his interests in mushroom toxicology? Influence? Uh, yes, well, of course, uh, being a medical doctor and an internal internist uh, working in the hospitals in Boulder, in the Denver, uh, there would be questions about poisonous mushrooms, somebody getting sick, a dog, or mostly people in those days. And he and uh, eventually worked with our current um, uh, connection. Uh oh, you're cutting out there a little bit, Vera. Um, but yeah, so a lot of what uh, Michael or Dr. Sam Mitchell's contributions to mycology ended up in involving a lot of publications around toxicology. This one is a very important 
publication, uh, Toxic and Hallucinogenic Mushroom Poisoning is one of the biggest ones we can see today. Um, and yeah, so eventually he also published on other subjects, including myxomycetes that we see. And then later on, uh, the influence that he had in medical mycology and such also contributed to um, other works. And one of them, another important contribution was by Dr. Manny Salzman. He was also a long time and important member of our society. Um, Dr. Salzman uh, contributed a lot to what we know about mushroom poisoning. He later on in the 1990s worked with uh, Dr. Barry Rumack, who is a well-known uh, medical diagnostician here in Colorado, specifically working with mushroom toxicology and mushroom poisoning. Um, sadly, uh, Manny passed away a few years ago. There's a, another QR code, which you can use your phone and look up an article in Colorado Independent. But one of Manny's many interests was understanding not just mushroom toxicology, but perhaps the medicinal qualities of fungi, especially from the psychological uh, um, medicinal psilocybin aspects. And he was, as a result, he worked with a number of other my, prominent mycologists, including um, Gary Linkoff, to help form the Telluride Mushroom Festival. And he was a fixture of a lot of the parades. And here you can see him in his Amanita getup, uh, working and promoting the ar argument that uh, mushroom users shouldn't be, or use of mushrooms and psychedelic mushrooms shouldn't be criminalized. And that probably played in a lot to Denver's own recent voting to legalize or decriminalize the use of uh, psilocybin. Uh, the Colorado Mycological Society is well known for lots of figures. One of the most important people that uh, Sam got to know when he started learning about mycology was Rosalie Brace. Uh, she was one of the first people that Sam met uh, here in Colorado. She ended up taking him around to various different sites along the Peak to Peak Highway, and that's how he largely learned how to uh, collect and where to collect and study fungi. And her and her husband, and here with Karen Schoen, helped to form what is known as to be the backbone of the Colorado Mycological Society. They started working together and working hard on developing this understanding of mycology in the region and worked together with uh, Manny Salzman to create the first uh, mycology society, um, mycology meeting in Colorado or Colorado Mycological Society Fair back in the 70s. And all together, they worked on gathering their collections and creating what is now known today as the um, Sam Mitchell Herbarium of Fungi, which is one of the most important collections in Colorado. And Vera's back. Uh, we're gonna, you need to be unmuted, Vera. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, but I'm moving along and talking about the Sam Mitchell Herbarium of Fungi, which Vera has been the curator for over the last 30 years. She's been promoted to emeritus curator. And in the past, um, it had humble beginnings from small little basement dwelling uh, parts of the Denver Botanic Gardens to um, our former basement. And you can see here all of us, all the volunteers and Vera working diligently on collections that we catch from year to year. And back then, um, we had an army of volunteers. Some of them are with us today, including Ikuko and Ed Lubau. But now we are in this shining, beautiful building in the Sam Mitchell Herbarium of Fungi. And um, we're very excited about it. And I'm sure Sam would probably be terribly honored by all of this stuff. Uh, but the history of the Colorado Mycological Society includes working with such the venerable mycologists. You want to talk a little bit about this image, Vera? Sure. This was, I believe, an Anama Foray North American Mycological Association that Sam joined as one of the early uh, promoters and uh, supporters. And this was, I believe, in Montana. This is uh, Dr. Orson Miller, the great... Uh, uh, our, our colleague, our, our visitor, our helper, our identifier. 
And right next to him is Sam, Dr. Mitchell, Dr. Sam Mitchell. And then these two, this is Linnea Gilman, a current volunteer, and I spoke with her yesterday, lives in uh, Denver, and her husband, Lee, behind. This is Hal Birdsall, who was at the time, Dr. Hal Birdsall, at the time was the, um, oh, I wanted to say about Linnea. Linnea has a master's degree under Orson Miller, so she's a trained mycologist. This uh, uh, person here is Dr. Hal Birdsall, who was uh, the uh, mycologist for the, uh, the, the government uh, labs in Wisconsin. And this is Hope Miller, which is, who is uh, Orson's wife, and her daughter, Andy. And they were, uh, we rarely could get a picture of Sam because he was always behind the camera or doing something else. So we, it was, it's a nice thing to have yeah. for uh, us. And when we started having fairs, we, um, we want to try to bring in some of the brightest minds in mycology. And here's an example. I mean, we have our stars and Vera Evenson, of course, here. But, of, you know, having her, giving her a partner as somebody such like Orson Miller, who's also pictured here in the past to our fairs, is very important to us. So we actually have a long history of bringing in well-known mycologists. Um, today's speaker uh, will be Dr. Kathy Cripps. And her with Vera and Michael Quo produced this book, Mushrooms of the Rocky Mountain, or Essential Guide to Rocky Mountain Mushrooms by Habitat. Uh, and this, along with Vera's own book, Mushrooms of the Rocky Mountain Region, are pretty much the essential go-to guides for mycology uh, here in Colorado. And moving on, um, as I was saying, forays, collecting mushrooms is the best way to go about learning them and the CMS does what it can to offer as many forays so people can look out and try to learn their mushrooms. This is going to be, this was a very weird year, not just because of the obvious, but here in Colorado it's been very dry. So we've got a few mushrooms and we will share them with you later today uh, over the course of the meeting. But here's an example of Sam. This was at where, in Idaho, Vera? I believe so. Yes, they were. They uh, did uh, quite a lot of uh, of uh, mycology in Idaho because uh, Alexander Smith's wife was from Idaho, and they met in Idaho and were married there. So uh, there's a, a connection with Idaho that was both personal and, of course, unexplored um, yeah. mycologically. Uh, no one had ever collected in Idaho, I think, and so. That's why we have a lot of collections in Idaho. Right. And now we're getting more from Justin. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when we have our forays, we are often joined and meet up with great mycologists. We have, of course, the late uh, Dr. Gary Linkoff, um, his awesome uh, mentor and influencer in Colorado, originally from New York, but uh, as I mentioned before, him and Manny were instrumental in forming the Telluride uh, Mushroom Festival. And this is uh, Dr. Clark Overbow from uh, Oklahoma State University, yeah. I think. And in the past, we've been also uh, benefited from um, having Dr. Nguyen, uh, Tom Volk, uh, join us in collecting trips here in Colorado. This was just a few years back. I think the fair in 2017. Um, yes. Yeah. And if you're interested, there's lots of fun forays. Uh, in the future, we hope to offer field trips as well. Uh, in the past, we've had field trips to places like Hazel Dell, and there's lots of different mushroom experts and mushroom cultivation groups around that can help promote mycology. Um, but our forays and our fairs are our bread and butter. And in the past, we've had big fairs in Mitchell Hall here at Denver Botanic Gardens with thousands of people coming to check it out. So here we've got Vera answering mushroom questions and then our displays of all sorts and all kinds. We have guest fair identifiers. Last year was Dr. Andrew Methvin. The previous year was Dr. Michael Quo, the co-author of this book with Vera and Kathy, uh, as well as Dr. Elsa Valinga, one of the premier experts on 
identifying fungi. And then you also have, again, or Dr. Orson Miller, uh, Dr. Jack States has been in the past, Mr. Truffles, and of course, Roy Holling, who's from the New York Botanic Gardens, and his wife, uh, Barbara Tears, who's very influential for helping us here um, at Sam Mitchell Herbarium of Fungi and helping communicate the relevance of mycology. Yeah, so with that, do you have anything else you'd like to say, Vera? I don't think so, except that I've often said, now that I see that his name written all over the new herbarium, fungarium, and the new space in the science and art building, Sam Mitchell, wouldn't he be amazed? Uh, he would be absolutely stunned because he was a humble man. He right. uh, really, uh, in fact, he said, I, uh, he's been quoted, and I um, quote him sometimes, I study medicine to make a living, and I study fungi to make living worthwhile. And it just captured him. He became an expert in uh, myxomycetes and has thousands of collections in here and at the uh, USDA of uh, his mostly Colorado uh, collections of myxomycetes. Very important um, uh, specimens that um, we need to study more, always want to uh, take time to study more of his wonderful collection. Sam was an amazing man. He changed lives. And we need to uh, honor him. Yeah. We're very grateful to him for helping him start all this. And we're also very grateful to Manny Salzman for getting the fair started and yes. all of these. Yeah. Um, and so thank you very much for joining me, Vera. I think that is the oh. end of our talk. Again, if you are interested in learning more about um, some of this background and this history, there is this article in Fungi Magazine that Vera wrote with myself and uh, Dr. Scott Bates. Uh, we have a full schedule today, and we're going to move on to the next set of presenters. Um, and thank you. I'm going to thank you, Vera, and I'm going to go ahead and make you a member of the audience. That's okay with you? Please. Love it. All right, great. Thank you, Vera, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.